Mickey, Meike, Mikey, Mike. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. In the meantime, let's go with Mikey. So a good friend of mine recently bought a brand new lens from Mikey. It's the 35mm f1.4. And she asked me if I like to do the unboxing and have the first experience with it. Can you believe that? Like, thank God for friends like that. In fact, don't subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to her. Subscribe to both of us. At first, I was hesitant. I was doubting myself. In fact, I didn't want to reply at all. Until I finally said... So without further ado, here are 5 things you should know about the Mikey 35mm f1.4. Before I begin, if you want to see the unboxing video I made, link in the description box below. Alright, thing number one, it's small and heavy. Out of the box, the lens is very small but surprisingly heavy. Although I prefer that over a lighter lens because it signifies that it's built like a tank. It's mostly metallic and it has two rings for focusing and aperture control. By the way, it also comes with a lens hood that looks nice as well. Thing number two, it's sharp. For the image sharpness, I'd say that this could be an alternative to my Sigma 30mm. Of course, at the end of the day, the Sigma still has the upper hand, but generally speaking, when posted on socials, I don't think you'd notice which is which, unless you really go into it. Thing number three, it's a legitimate f1.4. I like that word, legitimate. Not legit, legitimate. Because of that, this lens is good in low light situations. I tried taking pictures of my drum set in my not so well lit studio and I got no problem using this lens. Not only that, but this large aperture is the key to that blurry background. So for both photography and videography, this lens is very much reliable. Thing number four, it has no in-body stabilization. So if you're using a camera that has no IBIS, the, the, so if you're using a camera that has no IBIS, the in-body image stabilization like the Sony A6400, the one I'm using right now, you'd want to pair this to a gimbal or at least a stand. That leaves us with the idea that this lens is not the best option for handheld vlogging. Not unless again you do something to get a more stabilized, stabilized. Not unless, again, you do something to get a more steady footage. Lastly, thing number five, it's a manual lens. This is my first time using a manual lens and I didn't expect that even the aperture is controlled manually. Good thing it has all the numbers and the markers for precision and accuracy. Plus, both rings are buttery smooth. Now let's talk about it not having the option to go automatic. I don't know about you but with my other lenses, I get the subject in perfect focus by tapping the screen while in autofocus mode. And when the subject is already in focus, I will lock it in by changing the mode to manual focus. That may be a hack or a lazy way to do it but that's how I do it especially if I don't have the luxury of time to find the perfect focus. With this lens, every single time you have to set the focus manually. Chances are you might be shooting all day and when you get home, you realize that there are shots that are not in proper focus. Well, that happened to me. For handheld vlogging where you want to be as spontaneous as you can, you want your lens to be as equally spontaneous. Hence, manual lenses aren't the most recommended options. Plus the fact that it has a focal length of 35 millimeter, so it's going to be a bit tight. For talking headshots, it's just an added work, especially if you are a solo creator like me, as you need to make sure first that the focus is set right before you go in front of the camera. Other than that, the focal length, the aperture, pretty much acceptable for me. Also for unboxing, which I regularly do, of course, the unboxing, done, 
unboxing. You get the idea? Okay. Going back, for the type of unboxing that I do, the distance of the subject from the camera is constantly changing. Thus, an automatic lens is indeed a need. That being said, for this particular purpose, this lens is sort of my last choice. But for other things such as cinematic videos where I usually go manual, this lens is without a doubt a contender. For B-rolls and product shoots, I would highly prefer this over my Sony 18-105 to because of that f1.4. For portraits, this focal length together again with that generous aperture is very much capable. For street, landscape, low-light photography, you can't go wrong with this lens. There you go folks, obviously there are many more pros and cons that I wasn't able to cover in this video. But nevertheless, for its price, you might want to consider having this lens in your arsenal. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Also in this time and age that everything seems to be automated, sometimes it's kind of fun doing things manually. Would you agree? Before I close, you might want to watch my other lens reviews, links down below. Once again, if you're getting a thing or two from this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel for more not super technical but rather practical approach to gadgets and technologies. Until then, thank you for watching.